Hey everyone, Joshua Hamlin here, and today I'm in Indianapolis joined by Rodrigo Blankenship, or as his fans call him, Hot Rod. Uh, for you football fans out there, you might recognize him as the kicker from the Indianapolis Colts. But today we're taking a look at his Lego collection here, and he's gonna tell us about some of his Lego fandom and some of the stuff that he's collected over the years. So we'll start down here at the very end with your Star Wars minifigure collection. Obviously, we'll see a trend with a lot of Star Wars stuff here today. Mm -hmm. So why don't you uh, just tell us about kind of some of your, your favorites here and how you first started collecting these. Yeah, um, so I guess just first, thank you guys so much for making the trip down here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I appreciate you guys taking the time. You've been interested in my story and my passion um, for Legos and lots of things. <laughs> <It's> um, <true. laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess to start down here um, on these first few base plates, it's just kind of the, uh, the clone army and Imperial army. And the way that it's set up right now is just kind of a transition. So this first base plate that you see on the far right is all phase one clone troopers. And then on the next plate is phase two clone troopers, and then the progression there after that is the uh, stormtroopers um, in, in transition to the Imperial era. So, you know, that was just kind of how I organized all of these guys. Um, these base plates are a mixture of official and custom figures. Um, this phase one plate is mostly official stuff. The uh, Senate commandos from a few sets, regular phase one clone troopers, ARF troopers, um, some, of the custom, some of the commanders in the front are official, uh, some of them are custom. Um, the phase two plate is a larger portion of custom figures, just some things that, you know, fans really wanted, you know, members of the community really wanted, but Lego just hasn't made for whatever reason. Maybe it's just, they haven't made them yet. Um, but a lot of, uh, a lot of custom designs and figures on this, uh, phase two plate. And then Imperial Army is also a mixture, a lot of, uh, official figures more towards the front and then, uh, a little bit more towards the back, some of the Purge Troopers. Lego hasn't made any Purge Troopers yet, but those are from Jedi Fallen Order. Those are super sweet. And then, uh, you know, custom Red Darth Vader, custom Moff Gideons back there from The Mandalorian. Uh, they do have an official Moff Gideon now with the light cruiser. They came out this past summer, but at the time that I had gotten them, they weren't, uh, they hadn't been made yet. So, you know, that's just kind of what we got going on here mm -hmm. with um, the custom, with uh, the base plates and then this, uh, case back here. This is all uh, custom figures. Um, I'll actually move this just for a second. If you can get a little bit more light in there. There's but... figures on top of figures. Here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, so these are all uh, custom made figures, um, mostly designed by a company called AV uh, Figures. For people in the custom community, they'll know um, AV Figures. Andrew Vu is the he is the, the head of that, and so uh, a lot of these figures were um, designed with uh, other people and, and AV figures uh, to put these together. Um, that's the uh, custom hot rod trooper that I actually helped design, this black one with the, with the flames on it. Ooh, I like um, it. Yeah, so that was, that was really cool. Um, I got to work with, uh, with AV to kind of uh, put that together. I told him that I kind of wanted it to have the vibes of like a hot rod car, and so I'd <laughs> sent him some pictures from... Google of, you know, this like hot rod car that I really liked that was black with the red and yellow flames. And so uh, we kind of went from there and he just went to work and made a really cool custom trooper. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. And uh, that case is all customs. It's a, a Wicked Brick uh, is the company that makes that case. And uh, this is the biggest one they have. It holds 100 figures. And uh, yeah, they're uh, all pretty sweet. Yeah, no, they, they look fantastic. So this is just a massively impressive collection here. How do you decide which Star Wars figures you're going to pick up? Or do you just try to basically get as much as you can? It seems like you're a fan of, you know, uh, the whole series of Star Wars here, not just like one particular movie or anything. So I'm sure you go for as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it all started with, you know, buying sets. Um, you know, when I first started collecting Legos, just... You know, I'd go to the store with my parents, and if there was something that I thought was really cool and was pretty reasonably priced, I'd ask my parents if I could get it. And, you know, if they got it for me, then, then great. You know, I'd come <laughs> home, build the set, and then, you know, that was kind of how the minifigure collection started was with all those sets. Um, but, you know, I think uh, a little bit more recently with my collecting, I've been a little bit more focused on the figures. And so, you know, at that point, it was just like, you know, if I really saw something that was really cool and something that I really liked, I would just try and try and pick it up, whether it was on, you know, eBay or whether it was from uh, one of one of the guys that I buy from on, on Instagram when they do their live auctions. If there was something cool and I really liked it, I'd just try and go for it. 
So you've got this massive collection of figures here, and I know you do a lot with LEGO community on Instagram, so talk about kind of your, your interactions with LEGO fandom on there and how you've picked up some of these minifigures over there uh, over the years. Yeah, um, so I think that my first interaction with LEGO on Instagram came from uh, Republic Bricks. Uh, that's his, his Instagram handle anyway. Uh, his real name is Timmy. Uh, he lives in California, and uh, I think he had, he had seen that you know, last year, uh, going into my rookie season, the day before roster cuts, when they announced the rosters and who was going to be the kicker that the team went with, um, you know, I had I had told the local media that you know I had uh, spent the night before building a Lego set just to kind of like take my mind off of things, and so he had sent me a message and was like, "Hey, I saw that you were you know a pretty big Lego fan. Um, you know, I'd love to send you some a couple of free figures, and you know, if you want to check out my auctions sometime, I do." live auctions on Instagram and you know you just bid on them during the stream and then send you an invoice afterwards and send you your your figures whatever you win and so he sent me a couple of free figures it was super nice of him and that kind of what is what brought me into it and I started to go to his auctions and started to uh you know kind of amass the army amass the collection <laughs> uh from that point and so that was at the beginning of last season um that that, that was kind of really when it kind of accelerated for me and I met a lot of other uh, auctioneers on Instagram, uh, Timmy being one of the, the more prominent ones, but another one of the, the other ones that I've uh, done business with a lot, his name is Maddie, um, who, is, uh, who lives in Iowa, and uh, I've gotten a lot of cool things from both of them. Uh, not limited to just figures, I have gotten some sets uh, mm -hmm. from both of them, including the, the Osprey that I know we'll get to later that I got from uh, Maddie, which was really cool. So. That was kind of how my experience with Lego and Instagram got started, and now I have a, a Lego dedicated account, or at least a, a collection dedicated account on Instagram. I have a second account, my uh, Rod the Collector 3 account, where now that's the account that I use to do kind of all of my collecting business, whether that's um, you know communicating with the auctioneers. If I'm you know going to go buy stuff from their auctions, I'll do it through that account, and I showcase uh, all of my collections, my Lego Transformers, all that stuff uh, is showcased on that second account now. Yeah, no, it's a great account. We'll make sure to put a link in the description of this video to the Rod the Collector account because you post all these great photos of Star Wars figures and I think you even do some live streams over there sometimes, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I have done a couple of live streams on there, a couple of uh, live build and Q&A things. Um, you know, I'm trying to, trying, to, trying to get into that a little bit more. Just, I mean, I, I really enjoy getting to do that. Obviously, I love building Lego, but um, I also enjoy getting to interact with uh, my fans and, and followers in the community. So definitely looking forward to doing a few more of those this season. Um, I got to try and, you know, pick the right times just because our schedule is a little hectic uh, during the season. But, you know, we have our, our off days here and there during the week. And, and those are uh, the best times for me when I can get around to doing those lives. And they're a lot of fun. Awesome. So then to dive a little bit deeper into the, the minifigures here, do you have a few that are your favorites or ones you'd want to, I know you, you kind of told the story behind the Hot Rod one, which is super cool there, but any others that you mm -hmm. love just because of the figure they represent or the way they were designed? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, so I would say definitely these two guys right here. Um, so these are actually based on me. Um, okay. So these, <laughs> these two are, these are two custom Arrigo Blankenship clone troopers and they're uh, based on uh, my uniforms from when I was at the University of Georgia. Um, so a guy named, uh, I think his name is Kit Customs on Instagram. Uh, he's based out of uh, London, I think, or he's, he's uh, in Great Britain. Um, he, uh, I had reached out to him because I had seen some of his work from like the Explore page or whatever and mm -hmm. seen that he had done some really cool custom figures. And those are actually hand painted. They're not decal, they're wow. printed. That's, uh, they're hand painted figures. And I was like, hey, you know, would you mind making me a couple of custom figures and so I sent him some pictures of our uh, of some Georgia uniforms <laughs> and he just kind of went to work and so he made these two guys and they're really cool um, let's see if I'll see if I can show this off real quick yeah you can see there on the back of his leg kit um, his little uh, artist signature and then it's also got like my name on the back as if it was like a football jersey that is super cool wow so, yeah so these are <laughs> these are definitely oops, sorry these are definitely uh, two of my favorites um, as well as the hot rod figure that's in that case um, that I helped design with AV figures. Those are definitely uh, some of the cream of the crop for me. And then there's a couple more in that, uh, in that other lit display case mm -hmm. that we can get to as well that are 
uh, some favorites for me. Yeah, I, lo I love that you've been able to really personalize some of the collection that way and have such like a personal connection to some of these minifigures. And it's, mm -hmm. it's got the Star Wars fandom, which you obviously love, but then also, uh, you know, your real life, you know, football experience as well, all combined into one there. Yeah, it's exactly. It's, uh, you know, bringing, bringing everything together, bringing together a lot of aspects of my life all into one. It's really cool. And then speaking of minifigures that represent you, I saw this figure down here. So what's the story behind that? Uh, yeah, so when I was, uh, my, my fiance Logan and I went to uh, Orlando in February during the off season, we took a trip down there and we went to uh, Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and then we went to all the Disney parks. And so one of the days that we were down there, we kind of took an off day from, you know, going around the parks and we just went to Disney Springs and did some shopping and kind of lounging around kind of a, a rest day, you know, while we were in between going all over the place to these parks. And so we went to the Lego store in Disney Springs and they have the little minifigure factory uh, where you can design your own minifigure. And so uh, I created a version of myself uh, in the minifigure factory. So I'll try and pull them out here without knocking anything else <laughs> over. So um, just had the custom printed uh, tile with my name Rod and then I got to uh, design the jersey uh, on the torso piece there with the three, the Nike swoosh and the stripes on our jersey, and then uh, three with blanket chip on the back. And then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the dual molded legs were nice. I had a pair, I had, I think I originally had this pair on them. Um, they, they, were, they, were, they were close enough, but mm -hmm. then you know, I was like looking around and, and one of the employees was like, can I help you with anything? And I was like, I was wondering if you could help me find you know, a pair of those legs. And it was on a figure that was like on, in their display cases right. as an example of what you could make. And I was like, I can't seem to find any of these dual molded white and blue legs, but they'd be perfect to finish off my guy's uniform. And he was like, I'll be right back. And like when he's got his key and put it in, opened the case and just pulled the figure out and popped the legs off and gave it to me to put on mine. So I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's amazing. So, uh, you know, help me, help me finish off the figure there. And and now it looks now it looks great. Shout out to all the awesome Lego store employees out there. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> they are they are the best. And you know, I know they have to deal with a lot on release days with people lining up outside the doors, like in the malls, waiting for you know all the all the new drops and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I know they go through a lot. So yeah, definitely shout out to them. They're they're the best. Before we move on to more of these kits up here, I want to point out this Lego Con box under here. So this is a very unique piece in the collection. Can you yeah. pull that out and kind of show us a closer look at that? Yeah, I definitely can. So, um, you know, since my uh, since my affinity for Lego has been, you know, circulating in the public <laughs> and you know has just been talked about a lot in uh, media over the last uh, year or so, you know, I've kind of started a little bit of a relationship with uh, with Lego and. They've sent me some uh, really cool, uh, some really cool sets. They sent me that um, that Volvo articulated hauler that uh, we can take a look at in a second. But also, when they did their Lego Con this year, they sent me uh, this little uh, special Lego Con box, and it was really cool. I don't know if the sets are still in here. Oh, there are a couple I think still in here. Um, so this was the uh, Trouble on Tatooine set from uh, the Mandalorian. I think I built a couple of them in here. Um, so this one, I think, was Hedwig, which was on the table. Okay. Uh, another one was, I think, a space, a space set, maybe. Um, there's a dot set right there. Um, and I think the bottom one had a Lego City uh, spaceship set in it that's not in there anymore. Um, but yeah, they sent me the Lego Con box, and they sent me some other uh, sets to kind of celebrate their, uh, their event that they did virtually. And so I was just really appreciative and really thankful for that, um, that they sent me all those sets and they sent me this really cool uh, kind of partner box. Right, the, the cool thing about this is not only were there the sets inside, but the whole thing is almost like an organization drawer. So it's, yeah. you can, you, there's a practical use to it beyond just being a box for the sets. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think once I can get everything uh, built, I can definitely use it to kind of sort some, uh, sort some of the collection out. Uh, maybe I can, uh, use it to kind of sort my minifigures and I've seen some other guys on YouTube that have you know drawers where they organize their minifigures either by year or by you know faction whatever whatever it may be so uh, I definitely could see myself using that to kind of organize some of the collection later on. 
Yeah? So we've talked a lot about the, the minifigures here, but you obviously have a lot of sets that you like to build and collect as well. Mm -hmm. So take us through some of these you have on display here, and how do you decide what you're going to build and keep on display versus maybe just uh, you know have to put into storage for space purposes? Yeah, um, so I think you know some of the ones that are out here are sets that I built uh, during the season last year, and so um, you know because they were already built i i just wanted to kind of keep them out mm -hmm. just as something you know just kind of you know proud of the work that i had done yeah. um uh at, at the beginning of the season we had a we had an off weekend uh between our last preseason game and our first regular season game and so i used that weekend to go back to my parents house in marietta and gather the rest of my collection from their house that <laughs> i had been accumulating while i was you know in middle school and high school and whatever um, and, and brought it all up here. So I now have all of my collection all in one place. And so, you know, a lot of the stuff that I had built while I was up here last season, before I went and got all that stuff from their house, uh, I wanted to keep out just cause you know, there's a little bit more, uh, a little bit of recency bias, I guess for me. Um, and I really like it. And so some of that stuff is why that's out here. And then some of the other things were just things that I really loved, um, from back home and, and wanted to make sure that I uh, could put them out. I know that a lot of people aren't super fond of the buildable figures, but I really loved that that buildable General Grievous and the Obi Wan, um, and so I wanted to make sure that they stayed out. Um, the uh, the Ghost and Phantom from Star Wars Rebels is one of my favorite sets. Um, I got both of them here. You can see it's connected up and, mm -hmm. and docked there in the back. I really love that set, so I wanted to make sure that one stayed out. And then um, the uh, the gunship that's way over there in the corner behind the. Iron Man Hall of Armor that also came up from Georgia, but that's one of my favorite sets of all time. So I had to make sure that I kept him out as well. I, I love that you made sure to go back home and get the, the collection from when you were younger. You know, we've heard all of those horror stories of like people's parents just getting rid of the collection or whatever. Mm -hmm. You made yeah. sure that wasn't going to happen. That's right. That's right. I had to make sure. I had to make sure that everything was going to be safe. So uh, I went home and um, my uh, fiance and I, we had ordered a bunch of like packing supplies we ordered a bunch of boxes and tape and markers and whatnot and had them sent to their house so they were already there um <laughs> when i flew down there and was able to pack everything up like myself so i knew that i was i knew that i was making sure i brought everything with me and i wasn't going to be losing pieces and then uh got a u-haul and drove it all back up here so there you go yeah that was an experience but you know everything made it so <laughs> That's, that's all that matters. Now, are, do you consider yourself a completionist collector in terms of, I want you know, all the sets from this particular Star Wars movie or this particular uh, Marvel movie, whatever it might be, or do you just pretty much buy whatever kind of strikes your fancy and what you think looks like a cool build or display piece? Um, I, I would say, I guess I'm a little bit of a completionist. I don't know, it's, it's wishy-washy. <laughs> um, I, I, I am about some things, but not okay. about others. Um, you know, the... Uh, um, over the summer, they released a bunch of sets from the Infinity Saga, you know, their Infinity Saga line of Marvel sets that was kind of revisiting, um, you know, making some sets based on a lot of different stuff from all the movies, all the Marvel movies that had been made to this point. And so I really liked all of the sets from the Infinity Saga um, that they came out with. So I made sure to get all of those. They're still in the boxes right now, but I made sure to get all of those. Um, so I did want, I was a completionist, you know, for for that line, mm -hmm. but the, you know, they had a bunch of sets that came out in the Star Wars theme at the same time, and I didn't necessarily have to have all of the sets from uh, that August 1st Star Wars wave. So, you know, I am a completionist about some things, but not about others. And I think it, it helps to not be a completionist about everything, because it, I might go broke up. Yeah, well, so especially with Star Wars. More yeah. than any other theme, Star Wars is uh, yeah. almost impossible to be a completionist with everything they release from Star Wars every year. Yeah, so, you know, it definitely helps to, to, to save a little bit of money to not need to get everything that they come out with. So you mentioned this Volvo earlier over here, and this kind of stands out because it's kind of... Uh, that, I guess, in the Osprey are kind of the two big Technic pieces that you have on display here. So is mm -hmm. Technic a style of building that you enjoy, or do you mostly stick to more of the, the system type sets? Um, I mean, the Osprey was my first experience with Technic. Okay. Um, my, uh, my, my fiance and I, uh, Logan, we, we like took turns putting pieces of the Osprey together. You know, we like pass the instruction book back and forth between <laughs> each other um, so we could build 
uh, certain pieces and sections of it. So that was my first experience with Technic, and it was one of the more difficult sets that I put together up to this point. But um, you know, it's it is definitely uh, a different type of building experience. You know, just because it is a little bit more advanced than a lot of the um, a lot of the themed like system sets and you know play scale type sets. Um, but it was still super enjoyable. And I mean, obviously the, the hauler um, has the added functionality of working with the, the app on your phone to be able to drive it, um, which makes it really cool. And then the Osprey has the, uh, the different power functions. The propellers can spin, the engines can rotate up and down. It has the landing gear that can retract and come out. And then it has the little landing bay in the back that uh, the doors open for it. So you know they they were definitely different and definitely more challenging than a lot of the other stuff that i had built previously um but they were both still super fun uh and you know i wouldn't mind getting a few more in the future i know that uh, my fiance logan has her eyes on the uh excavator oh yeah it's like <laughs> four thousand pieces uh she really likes that when she saw that uh, at our le at the Lego store the last time that we went a, c a couple months ago, and she was like, "Babe, if you're gonna get me a set, it should be that one." I'm like, "All right, I'll, I'll see what I can do." So. <laughs> no, that's that's an interesting choice, especially I, I, I'm assuming she's more of a, ca a casual fan than you are. So yeah. most most more casual fans are not drawn to those types of sets typically. So that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, she is uh, a competitor in every sense of the word. <laughs> um, you know, and we we compete about lots of things all the time, and so I think that the like, competitor in her is really drawn to the challenge of something like that. Um, so she definitely you know, had her eyes on the uh, excavator for a while and then also the, uh, the uh, Colosseum that we have that's um, uh, in the closet back there mm -hmm. uh, is another one that she's looking forward to us being able to bust out eventually and get to work on because that will be a challenge all on its own as well. It is. I have built that one, and it is. It's a super, super cool looking build on display. I've got it in the, the background in our studio at home. Yeah. But it's definitely a long build as well. Yeah. But, so. but it's it looks amazing when it's on display. So you'll enjoy that for sure. I love to hear it. <laughs> and so I know you referenced earlier kind of a little bit of how you picked up the Osprey, but if you can, obviously uh, this has a very controversial you know history. This set here mm -hmm. uh, with the the release from Lego. So how did you end up getting your hands on a copy of the set? Uh, yeah, so I got the Osprey uh, from uh, Maddie's minifigures. Um, as I had talked about earlier, he's one of the other uh, more prominent uh, Lego auctioneers, and you know he's a he's he's a good friend of mine that I've built a relationship with for now like a, a year, year and a half. Um, and so I got it from one of Maddie's auctions. I believe he got it from uh, he got it from somebody else um, that purchased it over in Europe because I think that's basically the only. Uh, you know, it only released for retail in, in Europe. And mm -hmm. so um, Maddie got it from somebody in Europe. And then I got it when I was at uh, one of Maddie's live Instagram auctions last season. So it took a while. I, I'd had my eyes on it for a long time. Just didn't know if I wanted to, you know, bite the bullet and, and risk trying to get it on eBay from someone that was in Europe. I don't really like to buy international. It just, you know... I've had some bad experiences right. with buying internationally in the past, so I wanted to try and find a set that was stateside. And so uh, when Maddie posted, you know, leading up to his auction that he was going to have one, I knew that was going to be one of my only opportunities to get it and get it from somebody that I trusted. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great that you could get your hands on that. It certainly is a very nice looking set, and yeah. it's a real shame that we didn't end up getting, you know, a normal broad release for it. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's great, and, and then it's got the functionality in it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has, uh, you know, a lot of the power functions that I had mentioned earlier that, mm -hmm. um, you know, really kind of set it over the top and make it a, a really cool, uh, really special set to have. So then as we make our way down to the end of the tables here, uh, you've got a little bit of kind of city stuff back here mixed mm -hmm. in with the rest of the, the Marvel and predominantly Star Wars things here. So uh, what, what kind of draws your attention from the city type themes typically? Um, I think it's more the space, the space set specifically, okay. um, just kind of being similar to Star Wars and just like, kind of, you know, being in space. You know, <laughs> I think that is kind of what uh, really... Uh, draws me to uh, to those sets in particular. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this this set that's out um, is one of the sets that LEGO sent to me along with uh, the LEGO Con box um, back during the summer. And so I was like, hey, you know, 
didn't have to pay for it, but it's super sweet. So, you know, I, I wanted to find time to, uh, to be able to build that. Um, it's got a little, the little like roller coaster track with the, uh, the like the little maintenance car that I had to disassemble mm -hmm. to make sure that it, he was going to fit on the shelf. Um, but that's, that's pretty cool that it has like a little piece of little roller coaster track on there. Um, and then there was a, there's a shuttle that's, uh, in a box somewhere that I can, uh, fish out, um, that came in the Lego con that actually came in one of the shelves, of Lego con box, um, that I found you can actually kind of combine with this one. Cause this is kind of like the, the thrusters, you know, the extra thrusters for the shuttle. And then I like pulled this piece off and then you can attach the other one right on top of it and kind of have the whole shebang going. So, um, I thought that was pretty cool. I really do like the, the space sets specifically just because they're kind of similar to Star Wars. Um, but yeah, that's how, that's how those guys made their way out. I love that description that like space sets are like real life Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. That, that's so as that, close as it's going to get, you know, so. <laughs> That gets your fandom as well. I, I know it's a, it's a good way to look at it. So mm -hmm. obviously Lego has done a lot with, with space sets and kind of partnerships with NASA and things over the years. So it's, mm -hmm. there's a, certainly a lot of cool stuff that they've done out there. So I'm glad you can represent some of that as well. But mm -hmm. then in addition to that, you've got a ton of Marvel stuff here. So we've got some mini figures. We'll start with that and then move on to the Iron Men there. Yeah. Um, so these are, you know, some of these mini figures are just from uh, either from various sets that I have or from uh, auctions where I just, you know, go to one of those auctioneers um, and would just buy some of the figures individually. Um, these are all the Knight Riders from the numerous uh, Hall of Armor sets that I bought <laughs> to make the, the full Hall of Armor. Um, so that's why I've got like 15 or so of those guys. And then these are just various Avengers characters. And then uh, these are from the, uh, the Marvel CMF series uh, that, that came out in the last, I guess, two months or so, maybe last month, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it was. Um, so these are all of the characters that they made for the Marvel CMF and all of the Disney Plus characters there. Um, and then on this back plate is uh, different Mandalorian characters. Um, you have Mando himself, and you've also got old, old school and new school Boba Fett, old school and new school Jango Fett, and then I've got old school white Boba. I still need a new school white Boba that came in, a, I think it came in an encyclopedia, like a Star Wars character encyclopedia or something like that, but I still need to get that. And then Pre Vizsla, Mandalorian loyalist Bo Katan, and then just all different kinds of uh, Mandalorian characters. And then these are all uh, custom Spider-Man figures, just lots of his different uh, suits from the comics from over the years uh, in Lego form from custom companies. I think a lot of them are from uh, Minifig FX, I think is uh, the company that made a few of those and made one of those custom Silver Surfers as well. So um, yeah, lots of Marvel and Mandalorian stuff there. Um, the uh, Black Widow, set i think this was a comic con set but they never released it like physically because the convention got canceled i think it was it might have been san diego comic con from last year or the year before um that they never ended up having in person and so they only released it on lego.com so i was able to get that and then uh the uh great protector uh dragon from shang chi uh, from the movie that came out recently mm -hmm. uh, i actually did an instagram live uh build of that um not too long ago. Yeah, very, very cool. Great movie there. And it's great to see that Lego was able to represent that with some of the kits. So mm -hmm. you've got, we saw all the Star Wars minifigures earlier. You've got some here and then with the Marvel figures. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have plans to do any kind of like custom builds and possibly have these minifigures on display in kind of settings or that sort of thing? Or do you mostly plan to just keep them on display uh, as they are right now? Um, I think in a perfect world, the plan would probably be to get some some sort of display cases for all of them mm -hmm. um just because it can you know maybe take up space vertically and not horizontally right. um you know uh so i think that eventually that would be the the goal would be to make sure that everything is in cases and then also having them in cases is gonna uh you know help them help to keep them from getting dusty and then can also prevent a little bit of you know like from discoloration um, so I think that'll be the plan eventually just to get some, uh, some nice looking display cases and, um, get everything, get everything cased up. And, uh, but I think we may still be a little, a little ways out from that. We have other, other priorities with the house, um, to make sure that we get done first before that happens. But in a perfect world, that's, that's how they'd go.
There you go. Yeah, you got time to figure it out. That's right. But then you got these Iron Men over here. This is a very impressive collection as well. So yeah. take us through kind of some of your favorites from here. Yeah. Um, so this is a pretty much completed uh, Hall of Armor based on um, the MCU. Um, so I had to. So like I mentioned with the Knight Riders, I had to buy probably like five or six of the um, the Hall of Armors, uh, the, the bigger one, they made two Hall of Armor sets. One of them I think had maybe four cells and the other one had like eight or nine. So, uh, I ended up buying a few of that bigger one. So I'd have enough, uh, cells to complete his Hall of Armor. And so starting on that bottom in the left, that's with the Mark one. And then it goes around in like numerical order with every suit. And then you get up here into the top row and right there is the Mark 85 from Endgame. Um, this was, uh, him in the time travel suit. And then this was a, uh, it's like a half suit up version of him that came in a, I think it came with a gift with purchase, like mini Avengers tower. Um, and then the top row is war machines, iron Patriots. You've got rescue. You've got the full Mark 50. And then these are comic book inspired suits comic book, Mark two, 22, 30, um, you know, and then other comic book mm -hmm. versions as well so some of them are official that lego made um i think starting with the mark 42 with iron man 3 they made almost every suit that he that we saw in the movies after that so that's the 42 43 44 45 46 47 and then they go to 50 i think the 48 was the second hulkbuster and the 49 was rescue technically so they made pretty much every suit after that, but up until the Mark 42, the only suits that they had made were like the mm, Mark 5, Mark 6, 7, 17. So there was a lot of missing ones mm -hmm. and they never made official versions of it. So I had to find custom versions. And so uh, the two major custom companies were a company called Dragon Brick and a company called Lab 9 that made a lot of those other suits in between, basically from like 18 to 40, 41, pretty much all those suits that were in between there, uh, were, uh, I have represented there and were made by one of those two companies. So I really appreciative that someone, you know, was as excited about all those <laughs> other suits as I was when they showed up in that last scene and was like, oh, I need to see that in Lego form. And, you know, was able to thankfully get my hands on all of them. I think the only one, the only one that's not in here at the moment is the Mark III. And Lego has made an official Mark III that's in the uh, Iron Monger set that came out with that Infinity Saga wave over the summer. So once I build that set, then I'll be able to pull out the Mark III and officially complete the Hall of Armor there. That is very impressive. So clearly you're a big fan of Iron Man. What yeah. is it about kind of his character that, uh, you know, draws you to collecting uh, all, all of these minifigures here? Well, I mean, I think the, the big thing that a lot of people like about Iron Man is all the suits. You know, he, mm -hmm. he has so many suits and they all do lots of different things. Um, so I think that that was a big thing for me. I just really liked all the different capabilities of the different suits that he made. And then, you know, I think the other thing that's um, kind of commendable about Iron Man is that he himself doesn't have superpowers. You know, his, his superpower, I guess you could say, is his intelligence and his ability to create the suits. And that's what, you know, gives him all of his, all of his powers and capabilities. So I really think it's commendable that he was able to kind of create for himself uh, his superpowers. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that is very impressive. And this is a great collection of suits that you've been able to put together here. So it's cool to see them all in one spot like that. And like you said earlier, it's great that there's so many customizers that step up and fill all these gaps, whether it's Star Wars or Marvel, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. uh, where if Lego hasn't released something, then it's, it's probably available out there somewhere. Yeah, if, if someone wants it bad enough, someone will make <laughs> it. And you know, as long as you know the right channels to go through, you can find almost anything you need. And I know you've got a few more Star Wars minifigs down here we can take a look at yeah. as well. So what are these? Um, so uh, these are uh, a mixture. I will uh, pull it out here. Um, these are pretty much all custom figures. Um, and I'll turn on the light for a second just mm -hmm. so you can see it. And then I'll pull them out on their levels. Um, oh, so, nice. So this display case I actually got like two or three days ago um, from a uh, 
toy shop up here in Indianapolis called the Toy Pit. Uh, they reached out to me on Instagram and were like, hey, we, uh, you know, we had seen some stuff about uh, your collection. Uh, we heard that you're a really big fan. You've got a huge like clone army, so we'd love to send you a case um, to be able to display some of them. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So they sent me this case and uh, I spent the last couple days filling it up. Um, so I'll pull them out one at a time for you just so you can see them. Um, these are pretty much all uh, from the, uh, the AV company that I uh, talked about previously. These are pretty much all custom designs from AV and um, you know, various members of the community. Um, AV will periodically do, I think it's called like customer design commission, CDD, uh, something like that. And so basically their customers, you know, they have some kind of system where a certain number of commission designs are allotted and so some of their customers get to come forward with designs for custom figures. And so, you know, through that process is where um, some of these figures have come from, where it's like, you know, just a, another Lego Star Wars fan out there had a really cool idea for a figure and they were like, hey, could you do, you know, could you make a figure that looks like this? And then AV will go to work and, you know, make a custom design. So that's what a lot of, this is, this play is pretty much all um, AV figures there. Um, they're pretty much all decaled figures. So in the custom figure space, there's really two main methods for creating custom figures. You have decaling and you have custom printing. So with the decaling, someone makes a design and it's basically on what looks like a little bit of a sticker sheet almost. Um, but you have the design that you put onto this decal sheet and then you pull the decal off and you apply it like onto a blank body. Okay. And you know, so you use uh, some, some kind of adhesive to apply the custom design onto a blank body and then you can, you know, have whatever you want. And so that's kind of the custom decal figures. And then you have custom printed figures, which a lot of these guys on the left side uh, of this plate are, um, so like the little custom purge trooper. So like, this one, the design is just custom printed straight onto the body as if Lego would do it. Like mm -hmm. Lego just prints the designs for their figures straight onto the body. So, um, you know, custom printed figures as well um, are on this one. And then, we'll get that in a second. Uh, and then this bottom plate has uh, other, it also has custom AV figures, but it also has some custom design figures from some other companies. So um, this is, uh, these guys in the back are, I think it's the Domino Squad um, from Star Wars The Clone Wars TV show from, that aired from like 2008 to 2014, 15-ish, mm -hmm. uh, when they were clone cadets. Um, that was what their armor looked like and they were going through training and that was, uh, those are designed by a guy named Ingenierio. Uh, he used to be, his store used to only be on eBay, but now he has, uh, a website off of eBay called Engineerio.net, I think. And so uh, Engineerio made those. Um, and then some of these guys in this row right here are custom painted figures. Um, this custom Christmas Boba Fett uh, was also made by Kit. I'll see if I can pull him off here. So uh, this custom Christmas Boba Fett was also made by Kit, who designed those custom Rodrigo Blankenship UGA clone troopers that we showed earlier. I love um, it's Christmas. Theme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, cool. There's, they. I mean, the Lego community goes all out for holidays. <laughs> they have to do like Halloween. They do Christmas theme. Like, these are all, you know, Christmas theme figures right here. Um, so yeah, Lego community loves to go out, go all out, and you know, make custom design figures for uh, the holidays. That's another one of my favorites. Is that uh, Christmas Mando from Kit for sure. So. Yeah, that's a super cool display case. I love the, the way the, the lights work in there, and so it really shows off all the minifigures nicely. Yeah, I'm really thankful uh, to have this, and I know Logan is happy as well that, you know, the, the footprint for the collection can... <laughs> slowly you know, shrink. Yeah, it can slowly <laughs> shrink a little bit, and it can kind of go vertical instead of uh, horizontal, like I had mentioned earlier. I know she's definitely thankful for that, so I'm uh, really thankful to uh, the Toy Pit for sending me this case, and... Who knows? Maybe I'll need another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably more than one, I'm guessing. Over yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if that's the route we're going to go, I'm going to need a few more. So. But yeah, that's, uh, that's this guy. And then this is just the light box that I've been using um, that 
Logan got for me, the light box that I've been using to take photos of the minifigures and, you know, Transformers and whatnot to post on my uh, Rod the Collector page. Mm -hmm. So I love, we've seen kind of this whole collection that you've got here. Uh, and I imagine, you know, playing football, whether uh, it's for Georgia, which you can see all of the memorabilia behind us here, or mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, the Colts who you're with now, I'm sure there's a lot of high pressure situations you're put into there. So do you find Lego kind of helps you relax through all that? Is this something you try to do kind of regularly throughout the season? Uh, or what is, your, what is your approach to that? Or is it more just kind of, hey, I, I enjoy collecting this? I mean, I do, I, I do very much enjoy collecting, um, but I definitely think there is a little bit of like a kind of therapeutic quality to it. Um, it's just something that I can use to kind of, you know, take myself away from, from work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm incredibly fortunate and blessed to get to work for an NFL team and, you know, that I get to play football as my job. Um, but it can be, you know, it can be stressful and, um, you know, so sometimes I just need something to kind of take my mind off of things, just somewhere that I can kind of just go to, you know, get out of my head and just be in a happy place. And so Lego is, you know, one of the things that does that for me. For sure. That's awesome. No, I'm happy that you've been able to find that outlet. So now we'll take a look a little more behind the scenes, maybe some of the other uh, sets that you have as well that you don't have out on display. Yeah, sure. So this is the... Uh... <laughs> This is way, way in the back. Yeah, this is way in the back. Um, <laughs> and uh, so this is, um, this is most, this is pretty much all of the, uh, the sealed collection. Um, some of the boxes, the sets are built, so there isn't anything in them anymore. Um, so like, I mean, the Rancor mm -hmm. pit, like, you know, I, ha I brought the box with me. This is uh, something that came up with me from Georgia. Um, so, you know, the set isn't in there anymore, obviously, but, uh, you know, I still like to have the boxes for some of my things, and I like to keep the instruction manuals, obviously, in case things break. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the stuff that you see here is uh, sealed sets that have not been built yet. I do plan to build everything. I just, you know, don't have as much free time uh, being in season uh, to be able to build a lot of these, like, bigger things. Like, obviously, the Coliseum is going to take... A very long time as you mentioned the mm -hmm. uh, master builder series cantina this is like a ucs style um the uh guardians of the galaxy ship yeah. from infinity saga the daily bugles three thousand pieces so um you know i have a lot of really big projects to work on and i don't have the the time to do them right now i mean i, I suppose i could build them over the course of several days or a couple weeks but when i build a set i don't really like to leave it like when i build a set i want to build it all right okay. there you know so i want to make sure i have the time set aside to be able to do that so you know a lot of the bigger projects are going to have to wait until the off season but i do plan to build them all um just don't have the time right now but some of the smaller sets um you know i, I can definitely you know put together during during the season because i have the time to you know some of the things that are you know three four or five hundred pieces those only take a few hours so i could I'm sure I'll end up doing some more sets during the course of the season on like Instagram Live, uh, you know, over on my Lego or on my uh, collector mm -hmm. account. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much all the uh, sealed stuff I have. I have pretty much all of the August 1st Star Wars and Marvel Wave um, and are, uh, you know, pretty happy with a lot of that stuff. And, uh, you know, just kind of waiting to see, you know, what new stuff comes out with all the new waves to see what, what new stuff I may be picking up in the future. Got to give a shout out to the Battle Pack oh, yeah, collection yeah, yeah. there. That yeah. I know a lot of Star Wars fans were excited about those, and a lot of people have been, you know, collecting them. I've seen a, a lot of kids bringing them to Lego conventions and stuff, and it's it's mm -hmm. been obviously a very popular set. And I see you were able to pick up quite a few there. So do you plan to open all those at some point and kind of put together a, a large collection of those figures? Yeah. So um, you know, I was definitely on the uh, We Want a Five O First Battle Pack bandwagon. Mm -hmm. that, you know, a, a lot of the community had been campaigning for it for a very long time, so I was very happy uh, to see that they finally made it. Obviously, it was a little bit different than a normal battle pack because, you know, the normal battle packs that we had been getting up to that point were like $10, $12, $15. They'd come with like four figures from the one faction, you know, and maybe like one build and that'd be it. But, you know, they kind of did a super battle pack with the 501st clone troopers and they did a, you know two pretty decent sized builds and they had a couple of battle droids thrown in there as well so there's like you know 25 battle droids waiting for me in those boxes as well <laughs> um you know i definitely would like to open them all at some point and definitely get you know all of the uh 501st clone troopers together um to be you know have their own little section of the clone army um 
you know, I may, may take another base plate. I actually think I have another base plate right there. So I've got the base plate ready to go for them. Um, you know, I just need the time to be able to sit down and knock all of them out because I'm going to want to do all of those all at once to make sure I can get, I can pull all the figures and then, you know, have all the builds done uh, and knock them out all in one sitting. So I do plan to open them all just not right now. There you go. And I also have to give a shout out in the midst of all this Marvel and Star Wars, you've got a Viking set here and I am a massive fan of the Vikings theme. <laughs> I mean, it's a Danish company. How can you not love that they're making Viking sets? I wish yeah. that they would bring that theme back. Yeah. Have you built that one yet? Um, so that is built. That was actually a gift that I got from one of my neighbors up here in Indianapolis. Okay. Um, so the set is mostly built. It had to be, the, the ship had to be deconstructed a little bit just to make sure that the box could close all the way. Um, but the serpent is the, I think it's, it's kind of based on Norse mythology with that being kind of like the, the Midgard serpent from, you know, from, uh, Can you from, pull the box out just yeah, in case yeah. somebody, yeah, for people who haven't seen this set before. Yeah, I'll try to not spill anything. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, so the, uh, the Viking ship, yeah, Midgard serpent, there you go. So the serpent is pretty much all built. The boat, uh, the ship is deconstructed a little bit just to make sure that the box can close flat how it is. Um, but yeah, this was a gift that I got from my, uh, from our neighbors up here in Indianapolis. And I'm really thankful that they <laughs> decided to give this to me because it's a really cool set. Um, I think I've also heard some rumors. I'm actually just going to put this back down here for now. Mm -hmm. and I'll slide him back in later, but I have been hearing some rumors that there's going to be a new, they're going to basically remake this set, uh, sometime in 2022. So, uh, it could be exciting to potentially get the the updated version and have like the classic original version and the new version to go side by side. For sure. Yeah, no, it'd be great to see that brought back as well. Mm -hmm. So with, with all these sealed sets here, do you ever try to get your, your teammates involved in kind of building sets with you or try to get <laughs> them more into Lego? What, what is their whole uh, thought on your, your Lego collection? Uh, I mean, I haven't really, I haven't really entertained the thought of trying to bring in any teammates. Um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're all well aware. Uh, that I'm a big fan and that I'm a big collector. So, um, you know, during the season last year, um, you know, early on in my rookie season, uh, when I didn't have, I wasn't in this house yet, um, I was still like, I was living out of a, a hotel that the team was paying for me to stay in uh, for those first couple weeks of the season while uh, Logan and I looked for a house to live in. Um, you know, I didn't really have a permanent address and I didn't really want to send stuff to the hotel, but I was buying you know, I was buying stuff either at the auctions or on eBay or whatever. And so I needed a place to send them. So I'd send them to our practice facility, um, <laughs> Indiana, Indiana Farm Bureau is what it's called, uh, our practice facility. And so, you know, I'd just be sitting in my locker, like after practice one day, and there'd be a couple boxes in front of my locker and teammates would walk by and they'd be like, you got more Lego, Rod? I'm like, yep, I got more Lego. So, you know, they're, they're all well aware of it. Um, I haven't really asked anybody to, to help me to this point. Um, usually my main building partner is Logan and, um, you know, I really appreciate that, that she is, you know, has the amount of interest in it that mm -hmm. she does and that, you know, she wants to build some of the things with me. So, uh, that's always pretty fun to build with her. There you go. Well, may maybe someday you'll get more of them involved over here. You know, you got to show them this and be like, Hey, I'm not, I need some help with this. You yeah, got to yeah. get involved. <laughs> I think if, if I'm going to start with anybody, it would probably be Jacob Eason. Um, he's one of our quarterbacks mm -hmm. on the team and, uh, he was actually a former teammate of mine. Uh, we both were at the University of Georgia for, for a couple years together before he ended up transferring, but he is a huge Star Wars fan himself. So, you know, I think he'd probably be, if I was going to start with anybody, I'd probably start with trying to get Jacob and maybe, you know, have him build a Star Wars set with me. Maybe he'd go for that. <laughs> there we'll you go. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Well, you've got a few more sets on display upstairs. Do you mind if we go take a look up there? Absolutely. Awesome. Now to finish out, we'll take a look at some of Rod's collection that's more publicly on display in the house here. So you've got this very nice setup. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, some Lego, some other display pieces here. So uh, how, how did you decide what you wanted to have on display up here? Uh, yeah, so, you know, this... Um uh, this lovely shelf here was picked out by uh, Logan. You know, she's, uh, you know, applied a lot of her kind of creativity and her vision to, you know, how our house looks right now. Because um, if she left it for you, then it'd just be like Lego everywhere. Everywhere, exactly. <laughs> you know, so you know, she, had to, she had to make sure that, um, you know, she stepped in to make sure that the house looked normal. Um, <laughs> you know, but I was still able to, you know, get, get a few pieces out here. Um, the uh, the AT-AT um, was something that, you know, she uh, could easily identify from 
watching some of the Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we, we built that set together. Um, so I think that, you know, she, she, uh, she wanted to have that one out on display as well. I mean, I obviously wanted to, but, you know, she let me keep it out here visible because she participated in the building process, you know, so she has some pride and some vested interest in that one, um, as well as the baby Yoda. Um, you know, we watched the Mandalorian, uh, together season one and season two, we watched pretty much every episode together. So, uh, she really enjoys that show. So I think the fact that we had baby Yoda or Grogu, um, you know, as, as a set was another one that she really liked. So and, everybody and, loves, yeah, baby everybody Yoda. loves baby Yoda. He's so cute. So, you know, how can you not have him out? Um, and then down here, this is the, uh, this is another comic, uh, another comic con set, I believe, um, the Nebulon B frigate, which had a kind of, uh, as I know we talked about having like a little bit of controversy surrounding mm -hmm. the, uh, the Osprey, but the frigate as well. Um, from what I understand, there was a little bit of controversy where, uh, when Lego put it on the site because they didn't have the convention that it was supposed to release at. Uh, they put it on the site and then didn't put a customer purchase limit on the set. So uh, someone was able to buy like a few hundred copies of the set from <laughs> lego.com and it made it sell out super fast mm -hmm. so that people couldn't get the set as readily available as they you know, otherwise would have normally. And then he was reselling them on eBay for you know, a boatload of money once mm -hmm. they sold out on lego.com. But uh, I was... Uh, I got my copy from uh, a Lego auction here, so I didn't have to worry about, um, you know, paying an, uh, an absorb absorbent uh, resale price for it. Um, and then the last two sets on the bottom, I think, uh, were just a couple of other sets that we built together. So, um, you know, she was uh, she was okay leaving these out on display because she had also had some investment in these sets, the little uh, Imperial Troop Transport and the Knights of Ren Shuttle from episode eight or nine, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So yeah, you've got kind of that partnership with the builds and then it, it means both, it means more to both of you then when it's on display. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah. And then I got her the, I think I got her the flower set for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Whenever, I, th I think that's what I got, it, either maybe for Valentine's Day or some other um, special occasion that we were, uh, that we were celebrating that I got her the the flower set. She really liked that one. I know that they've released a couple of other like botanical right. themed sets um, since then, but I think, I mean, I think that's the best one that they've come out with so far and uh, it's definitely her favorite. Yeah, well, this is this has been super cool to see more of your collection. So, what do you what do you plan to pick up in the future? Is there anything you've got your eye on that you're you're hoping uh, that that you can buy in the future, or even things that you maybe hope uh, Lego will, will release at some time? Any other sets that aren't available right now? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would definitely at some point uh, like to get one of the UCS Falcons. Um, I know that's obviously a really big uh, purchase. <laughs> um, and it's going to be a really big investment um, a lot of time spent to build it. But, um, you know, both of those UCS Falcons are incredible, um, you know, really great builds and obviously look really great and could be really great display pieces. Um, so eventually I would like to get at least one of the, the UCS Falcons. And then as far as things that, you know, are still to come, I know that uh, there is a UCS ATAT -AT that's going to be coming out later this year uh, that is probably going to be pretty awesome um, that I would, I'd like to get. And then there's a lot of, uh, I've been hearing a lot of rumors about uh, sets that are going to be coming out from the Star Wars theme in 2022 that uh, there's a few like Hoth centric type sets that are supposed to be coming out that look like they could be really interesting. There's a, a snow trooper battle pack that's supposed to be coming out next year. Um, that sounds really enticing. Um, so I'd like to get my hands on that. And then, um, you know, I'm really excited for whatever new Marvel sets they come out with. I know there's a lot of Marvel content coming out, you know, still with the rest of this year and early next year. Um, the Eternals movie is coming out in November. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man No Way Home is coming out uh, in December. I know there's a couple sets that they just released on October 1st for that movie. But I think once the movie comes out and Lego has an opportunity to see everything that's in it, hopefully they'll, you know, make a couple more sets for it maybe put in the Sinister Six that's supposed to be showing up, maybe give us like a set that has all three versions of Spider-Man if they end up showing up, you know, so something like that, you know, <laughs> all of those possibilities that Lego could eventually get into, I think would be 
really cool to see and would be something that I'd definitely be interested in later. Hopefully, there's lots of possibilities there. And yeah. I, another thing I wanted to ask you about, so we've gotten obviously now a couple of soccer stadiums from Lego from uh, mm -hmm. stadiums in Europe. Yeah. So as a football player, um, obviously there's a lot of iconic football stadiums throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Do you think Lego would ever make uh, an American football stadium? And if they did, uh, are there any that you would like to see made in Lego? Uh, I mean, obviously I would love it if they made Lucas Oil Stadium. Uh, as I said, being my home stadium, that mm -hmm. would be really cool to see. Um, I do think it's definitely possible. Um, you know, obviously they did the, uh, the Man United Stadium and then most recently they did the, the Camp Nou, the Barcelona Stadium, which are two very, um, you know, iconic stadiums and have a lot of history and, uh, in, you know, with, uh, with soccer. Um, I definitely think that they're kind of, you know, leaving the door open for that possibility that they could do American football stadiums. Uh, I don't know if Lucas Oil would be at the top of the list. I think that they would probably do another stadium like maybe uh, Lambeau, you know, Lambeau Field or, or Soldier. Um, you know, those are two of the, I think, the, the more recognizable American football stadiums. But anything is possible, and I would definitely uh, like to pick it up. Regardless of what stadium it is, I think it'd be super cool to have an NFL stadium as a Lego set. For sure. Awesome. Well, there's lots to look forward to there. So thank you once again for taking us through the whole collection. Everyone watching, uh, make sure you check out the description. I'll have a link to the Rod the Collector Instagram yes. uh, page there. So if you want to continue to see what uh, Rod picks up in the future, maybe catch some live streams over there, definitely check that out. And as a big Colts fan, I look forward to seeing you on the field uh, con in the continuing in the season. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me.